What's up, Hyperfascination? On this episode of the show, I had an amazing interview with a lady who started off as a professional skier, had success there before transitioning to becoming a real estate agent. She now has a team that sells tens of millions of dollars a year and has recently launched a new business in real estate development. Welcome to the show, Athena Brownson. Athena, welcome to the show today. How are you doing? Dan, thank you so much for having me. I couldn't be better unless it was not sleet snowing here in Denver. It's a little bit chilly, but it is November. So how are you? Oh, no. I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm uh, on the ra- or traveling, so uh, in Oregon this week for Thanksgiving and um, you know, looking forward to some, some time with my wife's family out here. So uh, yeah, doing Maybe a little well. Bit of downtime. <laughs> yeah, um, excited to to chat with you. You've got quite a quite a background uh, prior to real estate, now in real estate, and I think a lot of what you have personally gone through. And I don't I don't want to steal your thunder or share your story, but I think <laughs> a lot of it has probably prepared you for this market. So I think it's a great message to share with real estate agents. So with that being yeah. said. Why don't you give our listeners and, and viewers, for those who are watching on YouTube, a little bit of your background and you know, kind of what led to you being here. Absolutely. For, um, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to hopefully give everyone a little bit of inspiration. You know, it's, it's not only been a difficult year in our uh, world of real estate, year and a half but it's also approaching the holidays and that can really be a tumultuous time for for everyone so hopefully and a beautiful time also hopefully but i'd love to just you know share a little bit of my story in hopes that it resonates with someone um and like you said i kind of i have had many lives so i'll start with the life uh that i really believe set me up to succeed in in real estate and also to survive some really, really difficult health challenges. Uh, I grew up in Breckenridge, Colorado, so I learned how to ski right around the time that I could walk. Um, I think my dad had me in a little baby Bjorn on the mountain when I was like three (laughs) weeks old. I think they'd probably arrest you for that these days, but um, it was a little bit more lax then. So skiing was definitely in my in my blood from a young age and I ended up a professional skier by the time I turned 15. So I was traveling the world, competing globally, skied about 300 days a year. Um, And when I look at my business career now and when I look at real estate and being, you know, really an independent contractor, I think we can all agree that no one really learns anything in real estate school. Like you, you pass the exam and and then (laughs) they kind of set you loose. And to be completely honest, the best business school I ever went to was being an athlete. Um, and it, that has created the foundation within me unintentionally. I mean, when I was skiing and getting yelled at by coaches and hiking the mountain when I messed up or talked back, I was not thinking, man, this is going to prepare me for life and really set me up to do well. I was, you know, cursing under my breath. But when I look back, that was the best business school I ever could have asked for. And I think that we all, you know, in some form or fashion, in our childhood and our lives have formative years that we hopefully put some sort of our energy into some sort of passion. And in that, learn discipline, learn accountability, learn the importance of mentorship and coaching. As we just talked about, you don't learn anything in real estate school. So the best thing that I ever did when I became a realtor was to find a mentor. I believe in mentorship and coaching more than anything, but with that, I believe in accountability and I believe in discipline. I I believe in, when I say discipline, I should say self-discipline and being accountable to yourself because 
in a market like this when we're we're facing you know a different market i should say not a bad market just a different market it is absolutely necessary for us to pivot our strategies and to really get back to the basics and to remember what it is that made us successful in the first place and if that means finding a new mentor or a coaching program or whatever it may be like this is the time to dig deep and i think that's where a lot of people it is easy to take your foot off the gas right now you know that it's easy this time of year um to just kind of take a back seat to your business instead of understanding that this is the time to gain market share, to really lean into that uncomfortability and to get through, you know, however long it's going to take for the market to be different than it is now. Um, so long winded answer, but that, you know, my, my first life as a skier is really what set me up for success in the world of real estate and in really overcoming some of the most difficult um, days of my life. You know, I was diagnosed with Lyme disease a little, about seven and a half years ago. Uh, Lyme disease is contracted by a tick bite. I've never even seen a tick. Um, I have no idea when I was bit by a tick that gave me Lyme disease. I was telling you before we uh, mm. started the podcast that I spent a ton of time in Oregon in the summer skiing. So. Could have been there, could have been Vermont, could have been really anywhere. But Lyme disease is unique because it attacks whatever you're genetically predisposed to. So whatever your weaknesses are genetically, it will go after that. And it, you know, it can be completely crippling. And in the last seven and a half years um, have turned basically into my body flipping against itself and I, uh, Lyme, ended up in about every autoimmune disease in the book. So I, for the last two and a half years, I spend four days uh, every three weeks getting plasma transfusions. And it is just about the most um, miserable, difficult thing that I could ever, I, I, it's not even described, there's no words that can, that can express how challenging it has been and how grateful I am to have a career that has allowed me the opportunity to really invest in my clients and be disciplined and, and stay motivated and keep my eyes looking, looking forward. Because I think for anyone, no matter what adversity you're facing, if you don't have something that's keeping you goal oriented and, and keeping your eyes, you know, moving forward, that's when it can get really dark. And I think there's a lot of people out there right now that are facing adversity in, in different forms and fashions, you know, economically, with everything going on globally, it's, it's really hard not to get inundated with uh, negativity. And it's really hard to keep your spirits up. So really understanding what your daily practices are that are gonna get you through you know, the most challenging days of your life. And that's really been what my journey has, has been figuring out the last seven and a half years is what are the things that, what's, what are your go-tos for when things are not going to plan? Because life does not go to plan. <laughs> right, and we've all seen that as real estate agents the last 18 months for sure. So I think, I think a lot of what you, said and have gone through outside of real estate has probably prepared you for this market to say the least uh going back to something you mentioned that skiing was was like the best business school you could have gone through and i i don't imagine it's because of like what they taught you economically right like you're like you're not learning about <laughs> p l's and marketing um i i think what you were probably getting at and i i just want to make sure i'm, I'm thinking correctly is that the adversity that you had to overcome as a skier prepare you more for you know business real estate than anything you could learn from a business school or real estate school or program yeah you know i think what skiing taught me that i don't believe you know i i mean i 
did go to business school, but what I did not learn in business school that I did learn as an athlete was accountability and discipline and the importance of mentorship and the importance of having people in your life that for for skiing obviously it was coaching i still am a huge believer in coaching i've i've been in a coaching program for years and years that i'm a firm believer that we are not able to see our own blind spots they're blind for a reason um if we have someone else a third party that can be looking over our business our life our sport and showing us and helping us understand where our our weak spots are, then that's where we're gonna have the opportunity to grow. When we, you know, with skiing, if I was you know, if I was not doing something, if I was not showing up at my best, if I was not keeping my word to my coaches, if I was not on the mountain every day at 8 a.m. after doing dry land training until 4 p.m. and then going to the gym straight from that, like there were consequences for for those actions. And when I look at real estate and what it really takes to be successful in real estate, it ha I, I'm a, a believer that it is one of the most difficult jobs that you can ask for. It's one of the most beautiful jobs. It's I wouldn't trade it for a thing, but it requires showing up and it requires hard work and it you know business is it nothing's handed to you and i think that is a misconception that is often um portrayed in the world of real estate is just how much goes into every single transaction how much effort and 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 thought and care you have to pour into your business and into you know, really growing yourself into being the best representative you could possibly be for your client when they're making the biggest transaction, you know, biggest purchase or sale of their life. Like this is something that we absolutely need to be consistently working on being the best versions of ourselves. And for me, I learned how to do so through athletics more so than, um, any economics teacher I had. <laughs> sure. How did you how did you make the transition from professional skier to real estate agent? Was that something that happened right away or, or was there some some time in between? That's an excellent question. Um, so I grew up in the world of real estate, but I say that because I thought I wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, my dad's a developer and a builder in Breckenridge and I followed him around job sites from the time I could walk. So I associated real estate with being cold and walking job sites <laughs> on new construction. And also that in a small ski town, there were more real estate brokerages than there were t-shirt shops. So I, I was the perfect example of someone that thought real estate was the corny car salesman that you hated. I, I had a really, really negative view of realtors to be completely honest and it was unfounded completely um but i did grow up in it i after college or after skiing i decided i should try a less uh contact sport i guess and finished college and i got an internship th during college with an interior design firm i thought that interior design was going to be um, my passion, I love art, but I, I love being able to create spaces. So I worked as an interior designer for a couple of years and unfortunately was just bored to tears. Uh, it, being an athlete, I was you know used to being pretty independent. Unfortunately, the majority of jobs out there, you're not very independent. You're working for someone and, and the ability to grow and to that really I just felt like there was a ceiling on my abilities. Um, I had a dear girlfriend at the time who is now one of the most high, I believe she's top 1% in the United States. Um, shout out Charlotte Durham in Bozeman, Montana, Big Sky. She, she had just moved to Denver and was working for a real estate brokerage and said, Athena, like, I don't know what you're doing. You love people. You love homes, you love design. 
why don't like why aren't you in real estate and to be honest I just hadn't thought about it it's never I don't think anyone ever grows up saying I want to be a realtor I, no, I don't know it's very very rare <laughs> <laughs> exactly but when she put that idea in my head she said look just meet with the owner of my company see see if it sounds like something you'd be interested in I had lunch with him later that week and quit my job literally the next day and got went to real estate school and he ended up being my mentor for the first about year of my career and I mean I owe everything I know about practical day-to-day -day how to run a real estate business from his mentorship so uh, definitely was set up to be in real estate and wanted nothing to do with it and that was nine and a half years ago that she sat me down and had that conversation and it's the best thing that ever happened to me i wouldn't trade this job for anything in the world how how has um the transition been uh or how was the transition after that first year you said you said you know this owner of this company mentored you for the first year did you uh, have success and then kind of look for different coaches or mentors to get different um, experiences or training like like what was what was it like after that first yeah. year? Yeah, so uh, absolutely and um, I was fortunate to be in a position that I you know he continued he still does mentor me actually he's not I'm not at that brokerage anymore but he's still you know someone I would consider a mentor but after that first year, I actually ended up partnering with my girlfriend at the time, Charlotte, and really, she, you know, in partnerships, I feel it's so important to find, um, understand what your own strengths are, under, understand what your own weaknesses are, and make sure that you're partnering with up with someone that, you know, has strengths where you might be weak. And for me, partnering with her at the time was perfect because I was more of a big ideas person, very social, really love face-to-face um, -face time with clients. She w was definitely more systematized, more strategic with, with you know, planning out our year. And this is, this is um, skills that I, you know, was not my forte i was i was definitely more of a big ideas person but within that i've always had a, a coach of of outside my company so i've tried i've done multiple coaching programs usually you know two or three years at each the most recent that i've been with is core coaching um it and it's very very disciplined i mean we have uh, a huge we do profit and losses personal budgets uh, gr you know weekly trackers of all of our activities everything that you could imagine that to keep you accountable in good markets and bad they're making me do and I honestly don't know what I would do without coaching because real estate, we're all so good at taking something that's very simple real estate is not you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here, but we all try to. <laughs> right. <laughs> we all do a really good job of trying to reinvent the wheel instead of just focusing on the basics. And what coaching does for me is really allows me to, to come back to the basics. And because the basics are what are going to bring you success in any market. It doesn't matter if it's you know the worst market imaginable the best market anything in between if you're getting away from the basic activities that make all of us successful then your business is going to ebb and flow and i think that's where coaching really comes into play is creating a a system a schedule of must do habits that you incorporate daily into your business to help take the ebb and flow into more of a steady growth so you know it's a lot of co coaching programs will say like we want to double your business in one year 
I am tend to be a more of a realist in thinking if I can be 15 to 20 percent better every year in terms of volume and GCI, then th that's sustainable growth that I want to continue. And if I'm not doing my handwritten notes, my face-to-face -face meetings, my breaking breads, my you know phone calls, my theme days, my open houses, my um, mailers, if I'm not doing those things, my business is not going to continue to grow. And I feel it when I, when I get busy and I start to be lax on those items, my business will in 60 days from now decrease. So having some sort of uh, tangible tool that you can either implement in your own business or you have a coaching program that can help you to do so. It's all about focusing on the basics, and especially right now. People want to have that face-to-face -face time with you. People want to connect. They want to know what's going on in the world of real estate. What, you know, what are interest rates? What are some great strategies that we can use to still purchase and sell in a market where properties are not selling in a day or two? People do want to hear from you, and I think oftentimes when the market's not as... Um, as great, so to speak, as it was in maybe 2021. As brokers, we it gets easy to shy away from connecting with people because maybe you don't necessarily feel like you have the accolades that year or, or the confidence even to have these conversations with people, but it's the number one thing we need to be doing right now. It's how can we use the use different markets harder markets as a time to lean in and really really build like deepen our relationships with our sphere with our past clients because they want to know what's going on just as much as everyone else, as as you do i mean obviously none of us have a crystal ball but um, I think it's really easy to, to get frightened watching the news, and if we can be there as a, as a resource for them, then that's the best thing anyone could ask for. How, how has your business, um, or as it's grown, how have you structured and built systems to, to handle that growth? Like, have you had to add virtual assistants, full-time staff, other agents? Like, how, how have you that's built a, out you know, as, as your growth has continued? That's an excellent question, and it's something that um, has always had always been. I, I mean, it's still a challenge for sure. Um, you know, I'm an only child. I was a one person sport, so delegation was not so was has never been my strong suit. Um, I, you know, had always tended to try and get everything done on my own, and I would wear myself into the ground. And when my health started to deteriorate, it it become I mean, with at in real estate there is a point for any any broker that is, is successful that you realize you need help. You need like you can't do everything alone because there's there's not enough hours in the day. And if you wanna have any semblance of balance in I don't know many real realtors that have much balance, but if you want to like aim towards balance, you have to be, you have to give up the idea that we can do it all on our own. And that was a really tough pill for me to swallow mm -hmm. was, was relinquishing some control. Whereas what I should have been thinking was, okay, so I know that systems and um, like details and like being, very disciplined with process is not my strong suit. I, kn I know that. And yet I was still trying, banging my head against the wall, trying to do it all. And it just wasn't feasible. So for me, I started with hiring a part-time assistant. Um, she's a licensed broker that knows the business extremely well. And like I said, finding someone that is kind of the yin to your yang is the greatest thing you can do when hiring. Like, what is their disc profile? What are their love languages? Like, you really have to understand the personality type that you are so that you can find a personality type that is, you know, symbiotic with yours. 
So after about a year of working, um, she was working with me 20 hours a week. I, we switched to full time uh, about a year ago and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. I mean, she enables me to be out face to face with clients, to be negotiating, to be, you know, in my business or work, working on my business business not in my business yes yes she, she's the, she's the system she's the systems to my chaos she is the calm to my storm um i would never have have i would never grow i don't believe without having an incredible human that i get to work with we have another amazing agent on our team who you know I, I was about to say she backs me up for showings, but now her business has taken off so much that um, we're probably going to be looking for a showing assistant in, in the next six months because we have done a really good job at staying consistent with the basics. And because of that, you know, my business is already up quite a bit over last year, whereas I see, you know, the majority of brokers have have not had great years and that's under I mean it's a it's a, a different market it's a it's a more challenging time but I I am a firm believer even though this is not what I would have said like six years ago that you have to find the people that are going to be the perfect complement to what skill set you bring to the table because no matter how hard you try I, I promise you you can't do it all and there's someone else that can do things better than you're going to be able to. So was it hard for you to make that first hire? Cause a lot of, a lot of real estate agents are successful. They'll get to 10, 20 million and they definitely can afford to hire, but they don't. Uh, and then sometimes instead of hiring the assistant, they go out and they start getting like buyer's agents, which just makes more work for that. They don't, you know, yeah. have the ability to do. So was it, was it hard for you to go out and make that first hire? It was extremely difficult, and that's where coaching really, really came into play. Was mm -hmm. for, I'll, I'll start by saying I I tried two other assistants prior to um, Andre, my current assistant, and it was a crash and burn. And it's because I did not follow the protocols that I had that had been pounded into my brain by coaches like I thought that I could sit down with someone and and get a feel for if they were going to be a good fit for working together instead of really digging deep and understanding personality types understanding you know what what skills they were able to bring to the table and 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 what I could also bring to their their world um, I also, one of the most important factors for me personally was finding an agent that was licensed, but knew that they did not want to be the face of the business. So under, they understood, she understands the business, but she, she's also not trying to outgrow that position. I mean to be a full-time agent herself. She, like we're, we're growing together. Um, but honestly, it is so terrifying to, when you're producing, you know, 20 million, you're pretty busy. You have, you know, you can absolutely afford that hire. But the idea of where do I even start? How do I hire someone? What am I looking for? I, to be totally honest, I, I feel like you have to find a coach, a mentor, a system, someone outside of yourself that is going to help you make a, a rational uh, hire, like a hire that really makes sense for your business, not just seeing someone's potential, but also helping you with the framework of what that person's position looks like. So you're very clear on what tasks are you need to delegate what tasks they're going to be doing what that day-to-day -day looks like i remember doing multiple time studies with my coach where i'm writing down you know every hour of the day what what i'm getting done in those per hour 
and going through and, and highlighting everything in green that was, you know, making me money and then highlighting everything or like basically making everything red that wasn't and understanding from there okay what are the things that are taking up a lot of my time that i'm not very good at even and how can i find someone that's way better at this than i am and then partner with them and i like like i like to think of anyone that you work with as a partner it's not necessarily an employee i think it's a relationship-based business and your team and culture is the most um sacred thing you have as an agent so making sure that above all you're not sacrificing anything for your culture and to have a culture you have to understand what your mission is what your vision is like do you know your your mission statement do you know your five-year vision? Do you know your one-year vision? Like, what is it that you want? What, you know, having really a high level of clarity about what you want, not only in your business, but like my coaching program goes through seven pillars of life. So it's, you know, pers yourself, spirituality, um, money, work, family, friends, and partner, like love life. And understanding what your goals are in each of those areas, because it's so easy to be all consumed just by our business, that if you don't have a bigger picture of what you want your life to look like and what your team needs to look like in order for you to get to that place, then you're just gonna be scrambling. No one's gonna have a clear vision of, of what, of where you're going, where is the ship headed? Like you you really have to, have to protect that culture at all costs. And you know, my, my small but mighty team, like every quarter we sit down and, and we look at the quarter before and, and we say what our two biggest weaknesses are after that quarter in each of those areas. And then we turn that into, okay, what are two goals for the quarter ahead in each of those areas? Okay, has our vision changed at all for the business? Has our mission changed at all? What are our goals for the quarter? What are our actionable steps that we need to do, be doing monthly, weekly, and daily in order to get to those goals? And how can we keep each other accountable to that? So having, you know, really hiring with a clear vision, clear purpose in mind, and knowing what the culture is that you wanna foster, because if you get one bad apple in, in the team or in your culture, it can take everyone down. And I learned that the hard way because I did have bad apple uh, apples and it, it took me down, it took a team, you know, it's it's not something that you, you wanna be, um, I guess it's quick, qu slow to hire, quick to fire. Yeah. That's the sad but really true. Where, where do you, um, or what do you envision for your team in the next five years? Like if, if you, if you if you were, you know, if we, if we fast forward five years from now and everything goes how you think, which we know <laughs> it won't, but uh, what what do you think the team looks like five years from now? Absolutely. So I, I laugh because it's always um, life as the plan you you know the plan you make for it never goes no, never goes to plan. But I think that's where growth happens. So even though um, things might not be working the way you thought you wanted your life to work, like I never envisioned getting sick, but it's honestly taught me more about myself and, and strength and grit than anything ever could have. So when I look ahead, I, I do so with an open mind in terms of celebrating the times that are not good because that's where growth is coming from. So I've never been a agent that wants a mega team. Um, I think it's awesome that, you know, some agents do love having, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 person teams. That's never been really my MO. Um, I am very relational. I really want FaceTime with, with my team. I wanna be able to do daily meetings. I wanna be able to do, 
to to really help each other grow all of us in every way in every aspect of life so in my perfect world five years from now i am healthy and when i think about the amount i'm accomplishing right now and i would say that i have not felt anywhere close to okay in seven years like i live mm -hmm. with a nerve disease that keeps me at about an eight out of ten pain on a good day i have such chronic i have chronic fatigue syndrome because i have lost the ability to create natural energy in my body like every day getting out of bed is the most challenging thing that i had and i've you know i broke my neck twice skiing i've had 10 acl surgeries like I know I know how to be um, tough and how to get through it, and this has been the most horrific disease that that I could ever imagine. And I always say, like, when I get better, not if, I'm gonna be able to conquer the world because I know that I'm capable of doing what I am now. And the set, like feeling 10% better, 25% better, I'm like, bring it. So I'm planning on feeling amazing in five years from now i would love to have you know i i laugh because my assistant is definitely going to need an assistant <laughs> uh, to be completely honest um maybe that's just a i don't think transaction coordinator is the the word because we already have a transaction coordinator but um more support staff so one one more support staff i probably have made one or two more agents on my team that are you know independent agents but you know still part of the umbrella and then a buyer's agent nothing nothing huge but i want to you know my i want to sell 100 million a year um i want to be i'm just broke ground actually last week on my first development so i mentioned that my dad's a, de a builder developer in, in breckenridge in the mountains and he uh is mentoring me through building my first spec home so i definitely envision you know having development being a part of a, a larger part of my business because i love the process of design i love architecture i love being involved in the entire process of it and i think in order to do that it's going to require you know up that buyer's agent and having more support staff so probably three to four home built developing three to four single family homes a year selling about a hundred million hopefully have some sort of hot husband by then <laughs> i don't know i'm taking applications if um if you're interested and and just have my health back uh, where where, where should the potential yeah. suitors go if they want to connect with you? Instagram or? <laughs> you know, slide into my DMs. Get on Instagram, Athena Brownson Realtor. You know, it, and if you're brave, my my phone. And I, th I think realtors are like the easiest people to track down ever because our goal is to get our contact info in front of you a right. like hundred times <laughs> everywhere. So it's not hard to find my phone, my phone and email. So uh, if you if you want to send your husband resume over, I'll, I'll take a look at it. <laughs> How's that for an answer? Yeah, no, that's that's great. Well, um, I think we got time for one more question before we wrap up here. This has been amazing. So thank you uh, so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, there's definitely a lot of challenges out there in the market for real estate agents with, you know, interest rates, low inventory. Now there's, you know, all the different commission lawsuits that are kind of distracting people. So with all of this going on, what's what is your advice to real estate agents? Um, you know, on, on how to not just make it through this market, but to, to really do well and, and increase their, their market share like, like you've done? You know, I love that question. I think it's such a perfect uh, way to end this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. This has been amazing. But every, if you look back at your life, everyone take a moment, look back at your life and look at the most challenging things you have gotten through look at the greatest adversities that you have faced and now think about what they have led to in your life think about whether it 
helped you grow into the person that you are now, whether it made you pivot and make a life decision that was going to alter your path forever. Like nothing good ever comes from comfort zones, as cliche mm. as that is. Like it's it's a cliche quote for a reason. Now, as difficult as I, I keep telling people, I feel like I'm on a gerbil. I'm a gerbil on a wheel, just like running as fast <laughs> as I can and not getting anywhere. And I think a lot of agents can probably relate to that. And it, you know, it's easy to get really burnt out and to get exhausted. Um, and I think this, whether it's a challenging market or whether it is, you know, a challenge in your life, adversity understanding what your toolkit is personally to help pick you up and motivate you so that when when times are challenging you can lean in and understand that those challenging times if you if you push through it if you use your toolkit and for me that's you know bl like blasting music when i get out of bed and taking the time like to put on my makeup and like put on my war paint for the day and and give myself that boost of like you you know you can do this i'm constantly listening to podcasts such as yours to audiobooks like i'm trying to find even the littlest things that are going to help me keep my mind in a space where i know that I, there is that good will come if I keep pushing through it. I think a lot of it also has to do with making sure you're taking care of your mental health, your physical health. Like if I didn't go to the gym, even if it's, you know, even if I'm extremely weak because I just had a plasma transfusion, but I can go walk for 20 minutes, I'm gonna be a much more sane individual than if I didn't. So that's part of my toolkit. And I would just urge all of, all of you, myself included, I'm talking to myself just as much, that when times in life suck, when everything feels impossible, when you can't get your listings under contract, when you don't have any buyers, when you know, like nothing seems to be going quote unquote to plan or, or well, this is where the growth as a human being and as an agent is going to come from. So whether that means buckling down and making sure that you're connecting with everyone in your sphere in the month of December, or whether that's getting your team together and making sure you're doing all of your, your goal planning and your vision boarding and your mission statements for the year ahead, like now is the time to connect with as many people as you can. Now is the time to be a trusted, source resource for for people that are interested in the real estate market now is the time to find out what's going on in your your sphere's life like how can you support them um is there you know a great way to connect with people is hey i know, like a lot of a lot of people have family coming into town for the holidays um do you need any recommendations for like a painter handyman like is there are there any projects that need to be done at your house that i can help connect you with a great referral for like how can you bring value to people right now because they're never going to forget that they're never going to forget that you know their agent didn't disappear when the market got difficult they're going to remember that their agent called and found out how they could provide value and during a hectic time in their life as well. So figure out how you can connect can connect with your sphere. I've got one my business coach always says if you're focused on how you can give to people instead of what you can get, which I think is per perfect for the time of year but always, then you're going to be doing well in life. So when challenging times come, like let's let's focus on how how we can help other people because I, I promise you it could always be worse. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed our time. If uh, if other people are you know buyers, sellers, agents are listening, um, can you just quickly tell us like which areas you cover and then how to get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 
my team, we pretty much cover all of Colorado or have a referral for you. Um, I specialize in the Denver metro area, going from Boulder to Castle Rock, and I also work in Breckenridge. My business partner handles Colorado Springs South. So we've got you covered for any of your Colorado real estate needs, even if it's even if you just need recommendations on where to eat when you're in Vail or you know favorite Apre places in Aspen. I am your girl. I've got an answer for you. You can find me at my website or Instagram. My website is athenabrownsonrealtor.com. And my Instagram is Athena Brownson Realtor. I'll spell that A T H E N A B R O W N S O N. And you guys know how to spell realtor. So you can find me on there. I won't bite, I promise. I'd love to connect. <laughs> and uh, no, I appreciate you having me. This has been really fun. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I enjoyed it. So. Uh, thank you again. And to all of our listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in. Please share this episode with other people that you think would benefit uh, from Athena's story. And we will see you next time. Thank you.